I'm Victor Lucas. This is Johnny Millennium. You are watching Film Fury, and we are doing something very different today. But first, we have to thank our pals at the VFS School of Film for supporting Film Fury. All right, so Johnny and I have been talking that we just sort of jumped into reviewing movies on this channel, and you guys have supported us by subscribing and commenting and playing along nicely with us, which is really cool. Thank you. But one thing that we haven't really done is kind of help to define who we are and what our tastes are in movies know. on this specific channel. I think if you follow Johnny on Happy Console Game. I did my top 20 movies of all time, and you did. And I've done lots of discussions. We did our top 100 movies and, and uh, games of all time on our EPN channel, but we haven't really done a Film Fury version of this, so yeah. we thought we would do our personal top three favorite movies of all time. Johnny's gonna do his, <laughs> I'm gonna do mine, and I think we're gonna start with uh, your number three, Johnny. Wow, I wonder, I wonder if you remember this movie. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it, Buckaroo Bonsai. Oh my God, yeah. 1984. That's your third favorite film of I all time? Know, Holy I know, I know. crap, There's, there are a lot of movies, Johnny. I know, do you know what? I always have to defend this one. <laughs> yeah. But hey, I can say this, the creator, the writer of Ready Player One agrees with me. Ernie, Ernie Klein, yeah. yeah. Ernie Klein. Yeah. I sat on a podcast talking to him about it. We both love Buckaroo it Bonsai. It was cool, yeah. Peter it, Weller, man. Peter Weller, yeah. Yes. He's coming off Robocop yep. right straight into that yep. and let me say the movie is batshit crazy it is. it's insane you know he's like a, a neurosurgeon he's a rocket scientist he's going through mounds in a rocket car yeah. you know fighting aliens giving advice to the president it's absolutely ridiculous and it's a hard one to recommend I've recommended it to people they've watched it and said uh, it's pretty dated. It's, you yeah. know what? But it's a time. It's a, it's a movie of the time. Well, you know what? It also represented because obviously this came, you know, post Star Wars and uh, Indiana yes. Jones and RoboCop and lots of these movies becoming franchises and universes and Buckaroo Banzai was absolutely invented to be a universe that would go on forever, forever. and ever. I know. And it didn't. And, and it, it was did, like they, one they, movie and that was it. He was going to take on the, what was it, the oh he was going to take on the World Crime Syndicate yeah. or League or something like that straight after the movie and he never got that chance. I hear that they were going to make a TV series. Kevin Smith was going to direct it. Right. That's in Shady Land but yeah. anyways it's a really weird movie. Peter Weller is the main character playing Buckaroo Banzai. He's got the Hong Kong Cavaliers. They go on these crazy adventures. They fight against aliens in another dimension, the yep. eighth dimension. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. I, I have a hard time, uh, you know, recommending it. It's just one that I saw in '84, and as a young guy collecting comics, I just related to it. No, so much. I, I get it, and I think it's totally damn cool that you pick something a little esoteric as your number so three. Weird. I picked a very small little movie you might have heard of. Maybe some of you have heard of it. It's called Star Wars: The Empire Strikes Back. Has anybody ever heard of this movie? <laughs> Never heard of it. Yeah, this was the second. Second uh, Star Wars movie that came out in 1980. I was uh, first in line to see it at the Stanley Theater in Vancouver. I skipped school. I think I got on the news that day. Wow. I stayed for two screenings. At some screenings where I'd gone to, I actually stayed for three screenings, which Whoa. was kind of nuts, but not for Empire. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was absolutely transported. Back, you know, when we were growing up, we had to wait for long periods of time before new Star Wars stuff was coming out. Now we get it every week. We get it, yeah. yeah right? Right? Now it's we like get the toys and games and everything else. Yeah. And back then, it was just nothing but dreaming and speculation and wondering where they were going to take us. Yeah. And then The Empire Strikes Back came out, and it was so much better than anything we could have dreamt of or hoped for in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. The introduction of Yoda, the the you know the incredibly beautiful scenes on Bespin, Leia professing her love to Han Solo, and he just saying, I know. And, and, know. The, and the classic scene is, I am your father. And that, yes. That was insane It was just then. punch after punch after punch. I mean, starting with the Hoth battle and the yeah. Tauntauns, and yeah. you thought it smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> like, it just kept going, this whole I thing. I mean, it, you can, you can Fault Empire for being the middle of a trilogy, oh. and it doesn't really have its own standalone kind of value. Say that. Well, uh, you know, I, I think you could justifiably say that this would be a weird movie to see out of context, but in context, it's, it's perfection. And I can't I believe agree. I put it at number three, but that speaks to the quality of my other two movies. You know, you know, and here's something I got to yeah. say: the reason why I didn't pick Star Wars, Star Wars is not in my top one or two movies. Whoa! And do you know why? Why? Because. 
it's like because it's your lifestyle. It's, 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 it's like it's a universe. Uh, right. It surrounds everything. <laughs> it, it is that binds big. Us. It is, it's bigger. It penetrates. It's us. true. <laughs> right. But it's almost bigger than all those movies. It's almost like a religion to me. Sure. But it's not like oh, it's just number one. It's like it's better than number one. <laughs> it's, 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 it's something else. It's number infinity. And number infinity. We'll okay. go. We'll go there. Okay. Anyways, we'll move on. Right. My a great choice, by the way. Thank How can you. that be a wrong choice? Yeah. My second favorite movie of all time. John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little oh, China. Oh, that's nice. With Kurt Russell. Going oh. weird with your list. I love no, it. I, I love it. I, it's not weird. I grew up in the 80s I like know, you did. I know. These are the movies I was watching yeah. you know, when I was a kid. And, uh, you can, know? We, can we just say, because we just got Kurt Russell again in Guardians 2, what a gift, what a gift. to movies this oh, guy yeah. is, right? Like yes. He's played so many cool characters. Did you see Soldier with Kurt Russell? That was like oh, yeah, in the two thousands. Yeah, a long you know, time ago. Yeah. But he got a buff. Like that guy is just amazing, right? Escape from New York. And Escape from New York and the thing and like I even back to the Disney days that he used to like, incredible dude. He's right? a, he's an amazing dude and yeah. he steals it as Jack Burton of the yes. Pork Shop Express yeah. in this movie, taking on David Lopin and yeah. all of that yeah. stuff. You know, I, I love the movie because it's magical and it's, it's mystical <laughs> and it's insane <laughs> and he's the perfect anti-hero. Yeah, he's not the perfect guy. He's not, he doesn't have all the best movies. Moves. Well, clearly influenced hero. by you know the stuff that Harrison Ford was doing with Indiana Jones, but scaling it forward into well, the making it comical yeah. and, and doing it so over the top. And, and yeah. also, remember BJ and the Bear? Remember trucking became a big deal? Convoy, like all of a sudden, like these truckers became here. Even Smokey and the Bandit. I can't believe you're bringing up BJ and the Bear. I'm Nobody, I know. nobody's going to even know what that is <laughs> totally, anymore. Totally dating myself. It is right really now. dating, but no, an incredible <laughs> film. Anyways. Everybody, you gotta see Big Show World Shiny. You'll have yep. a lot of fun Absolutely. and all that. What is your number two? My number two was uh, Christopher Reeve in uh, Superman the Movie what? in 1978. Yeah, wow. you know, you, you always ask me why I love superhero movies so much. I could trace it all the way right back to Superman the Movie. It is still my favorite superhero I film. I love the movie as well. There are lots of great superhero films, but I think Richard Donner and his uh, amazing creative ensemble, led by the perfect Superman, a guy that you looked at and you went, this guy is. Clark Kent and he's he was Superman perfect, yeah. and he was like he embodied that and he carried that mantle with him so elegantly we even when he yeah. he'd guessed it on Smallville years later after you know the tragic accident and everything he was just this heroic human being and I just loved that film I loved the uh, the reverence that they had for it I loved that that played with a lot of the late 30s mythology uh, they traced it all back to that the Krypton stuff with Marlon Brando as the, Durrell. the theme song so I want to catch John before. Williams yes the theme song is yeah. so so iconic. Yeah. If you ever feel like you can't do something in the morning, yeah. put on the Superman theme song. Yes. You'll be blasting through your day. Yeah, so I mean that is that is a movie that still stands up. Gene Hackman was incredible. He was really good. Uh, you know, Ned Beatty as Otis, Valerie Perrine, and of course Margot Kidder was fantastic as Lois Lane. I, I loved everything about I did it. Too. It was so romantic and so Perfect. perfectly done, and the effects were actually pretty cool. And it you know, it was all sort of held together by the glue of uh, you know that Christopher Reeve kind of was. And, and back then you didn't get a superhero movie every week so it's a no. major event to get it, Superman and yes. then, then the next thing we would get would be Batman in 89 pretty much absolutely but Superman kind of set the tone and it was uh, you know as uh, Jeff Johns and Kevin Feige both just honored Richard Donner at this Academy event recently and Donner was really hesitant to take on that work he didn't want to do Superman until he read the terrible script where they actually had Telly Savalas turn around and say uh, you know, who's looking at you, kid, or whatever, oh. like pre pretending to be Kojak instead of Lex Luthor. And then Donner said, no, I'm doing this because I care about this character too much and I want to yeah. do it properly. And he did bless his heart. And I love Superman the movie will forever. Very good choice. All really right. Good choice. All right. Well, we're down to our number ones. <laughs> what are you going to pick for your favorite movie of all time? It's a movie that I'm really scared about the sequel for. And the, the sequel is coming out in a few months yes. time. And that is Blade Runner. Saw it in 1982. My father took me to see it downtown Toronto. We walked out of the theater and I was remember looking around at the city and going, oh my God, this is going to be our dystopian future. <laughs> it felt like that. It was raining. It was a really crappy night. I remember that. Yeah. And uh, the movie, cinematography wise, you know, obviously directed by Ridley Scott, just changed my life, changed the way I perceive film. I've seen the movie hundreds of times. So I've studied it every single moment of it. It's a wonderful choice. It's yeah. absolutely stellar. It's one of the, I think, the purest forms of uh, capturing a science fiction, you know, fable on film. You know, yeah. it was just a, a collection, of, again, of incredible artists. Sid Mead's production design. Unreal. I was actually fortunate enough to see my uncle talking about familial connections to this 
this film. My uncle took me to a, a, uh, uh, an event that they had at the Seattle Space Needle where they showed off all of the props and assets for Blade Runner before the movie came out. So I got to see a real life spinner car and all of Sid Mead's production art and city models and things like that that we're they used in the movie. In 82, we're talking about. Yeah, yeah just before incredible. the movie was in theaters. And, you know, obviously I was completely already a film, you know, crazed yeah. little kid because of Star Wars and Superman and Close Encounters. Well, that's, well, that's what yeah. the thing is. Yeah. We had all these nice movies. We had, like, yeah. Star Wars. Then we had a bit of Alien. You yeah. know, that's Ridley Scott. Yes. And then in 82, he just fucking drove it home with Blade Runner. Yeah. And the movie was a bomb. It was not a commercial success. But over time, it's gained a cult following. And I'm one of those people that saw it in the theater. Thank God I saw it in the theater. Yeah. I mean, it was just, just life-changing. Well, the other thing is, is we've gotten closer and closer to that future, too, yeah. right? Like, date-wise, but also, oh, yeah. it, you know, sort of... It was one baddie's birthday a bunch of months ago. Yeah, but it's also feeling like we are getting edging closer to a Blade Runner reality, you know, like all of the, the you know, photographic technology yes. and stuff like that. I remember, Zoom in I remember to the in 82 left. watching it with my dad, yeah. and I remember Harrison Ford call, calls up Sean Young yeah. in the movie, and he's talking to her on a video phone, and yeah. I remember thinking at the time, could you imagine <laughs> having video phones, and now we have Skype? We don't even think about it, but it was a big deal. Now we I, make TV shows for phones. I, 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 on phones. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. On phones, yeah. yeah. It's no, ridiculous. No, so no. That's my choice. We're uh, driving at home. Excellent choice. Thank Excellent you. choice. We're uh, number one here, man. I what think is your number one? Anybody that knows me and has ever seen me walking around the streets of Vancouver with my satchel on probably can guess what my number <laughs> one movie is. It's Raiders of the Lost Ark, which I think is perfection from frame one to the final frame. The Paramount logo coming up. I can still hear the sound of the gun cocking that's oh, pointed at Indiana Jones. and he, You don't even see his eyes. It's just this <laughs> animalistic, almost like you know, Logan, the Wolverine yeah. kind of vibe. You just see the the uh, ability, the, the whip snap and the whip kind of speed that Indiana Jones has yeah. to take that gun out of that guy's hand. And he's just ready for anything, you know? This is where Forrest still cashed in. And the uh, the scene where Karen Allen is drinking people under the table and the Wonderful next scene she's moment. punching Harrison Ford in the face. You know, one thing I've always uh, loved that you said, and when we yeah. first started hanging out, I came over to his place, he had a Raiders of the Lost Side poster. I'm like, I think we'll get along. Yeah. And you said and the you same a Blade Runner post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, the thing is, that I thought is that what you said to me back then was that, yeah, like Harrison Ford was such a role model for us and for our generation. Yes, he really was. Yeah, and he was for you growing up. He, I mean, he is uh, an enigmatic performer. You know, that has kind of shied away from from the celebrity kind of spotlight. He obviously gets thrust into it, and he deals with it as best he can. Uh, but he has always been a guy about the work, and he's yeah. he's been pretty judicious about the the projects that he attaches his name to. And you know, think about what this guy is leaving behind. His legacy is impeccable. So you know, like yeah. these are the greatest movies ever crafted. And to me, he is the greatest movie star of all time. And you know, a large part of that is due to Raiders of the Lost Ark. And interestingly about this movie, I was kind of nervous to go see it because I, I'm old enough to remember the uh, trailers for Raiders in the theater. And oh, I, yeah, thought it, I thought it was going to be like a, a like a, thing, su yeah, a Sunday school thing. And I was already a little skeptical and nervous about the Sunday school stuff. Uh, you, you know, I, 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 I didn't fall in line with all of that. So I wasn't really into watching this movie See, like, movie Raising the Lost starts to be Moses. like a big religious Moses yeah, thing. Yeah, and, and, and so I, I held off, and then I went to see it, and I ended up seeing it 13 times in the wow, theater of that summer because it was such a transcendent, profound experience was, for me. It was. My, I, rem I remember I was a little kid. Yeah. I, I must have been eight years old. Yeah. My father came home and he said, I remember I was playing with a car or my Star Wars toys or something. And he's standing above me and he says, hey, do you want to go see a movie tonight? And I said, yeah. I said, what's it called? He goes, I don't know. It's something like Raiders of the Lost Ark. I don't know. We're going to meet up with my brother and, and his daughter. We'll go and see it. And here's the thing that I remember walking out of the movie theater and this is I know this is all my move my father said as soon as we got out he said yeah. holy shit what a movie what a movie holy shit he, he, he did that all the way to the car I have a theory you know? about Raiders too right and why it is perfection and mm -hmm. I think if you look at the whole catalog of Lucas and Spielberg and Harrison Ford there's nothing quite like Raiders of the Lost Ark they were not big time over the top famous forever celebrities yet mm -hmm. they were fast becoming that but by the time when they were making that movie so empire small, yeah. yeah empire hadn't hit right they'd had star wars which had sort of put them on the stage they'd had close encounters and jaws but this was the crystallization right and because raiders 
wasn't the first one. It felt like a, it was a little more feral. It felt a little bit more raw. Yeah, it's very and, raw. And there's yeah. actually a line in the movie. I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go. You kind of get a sense that the movie had a little bit but of that life. George, George Lucas even said, "Is that like this? Well, let's go and shoot it down and dirty." Yeah. And you know they had that attitude. Right. And then every subsequent Indiana Jones movie, as good as they have been, they've all felt a little bit like Indiana Jones the theme ride or yeah. theme park ride. Raiders did not. Raiders no. was vital and raw. different and raw yeah. and and seat of your pants. Magical. Magical and f like scary and, uh, you know, thrilling. It was thrilling. just thrilling from the beginning to the end. I absolutely and love Raiders. I, I freaking love everybody in there. I loved uh, Belloc and I loved oh, uh, yes. Tot and I loved, uh, I loved Karen Allen. I thought she was such a fantastic female foil for Indiana yes. Jones. I was actually so happy to see her in in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and I love Sala. I love the, uh, great. the the captain of the ship that they, they takes him out. Yes. We can't find Mr. Jones anywhere. There he is, and he <laughs> yeah. points out, and he's on the submarine. I know, that the, so music, good. the music kicks oh my in. God. What a great place to end right now. Yeah, absolutely. We want to hear from you guys. We want to know what your favorite movies of all time. Just make it a list of three. Don't go crazy. <laughs> in the comments below. And listen, if you want to make one of the greatest movies of all time, you can learn to do that at the VFS School of Film in one year. If you want to know more, go to vfs.edu.